So it's a hot Florida morning, and I'm starting a new video. Uh, today, I'm going to start leveling the house. Mercifully, it's mostly level around the outside edges, but only sunken in the middle. I don't know why that is, but I'm going to try to find out. So I've got my tools set up. I've got a 4x4, a pair of bottle jacks, and I have dug out the crawl space so I can get in there. And I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but I'm, I'm not the smallest guy in the world. And I still can't get over this. A grounding rod right in the middle. So that's, that's the first thing I'm going to do is take this grounding rod out and replace it. I'm just going to move it to a couple feet over. And I think I'll still be just fine within, uh, within code. So uh, let me start on that. This is actually working out pretty well. I'm, I'm doing some leverage with this 4x4, and uh, the, but the vice grips hold on pretty tight, so that, that's actually going pretty well. There it goes. Oh my goodness, works hard. So I, once I get it uh, pretty low, I like to give it a few more love taps to make sure that the lawnmower doesn't hit it. It's uh, just thinking ahead. Well, I've got some obvious complaints. Uh, there are a lot of galvanized pipes just left behind from when the plumbing was upgraded years and years ago. You can see there's a lot of copper. I don't know if it sh how well that shows up on this video. <sighs> Classic. Oh, there's, there's the old... No, that's the power line. There. And these straps aren't done too well. Well, that's okay. Uh, what really bugs me is that you can see the difference. Over here, there's tongue and groove boards, and I'm and I don't I don't think that this is the bottom of the hardwood. I think there's actually a, this is the subfloor, but then there's another subfloor made of plywood, and you can see where it's framed in. And apparently, the bathroom rotted out, and that's how they they redid the bathroom. They just slapped in a new subfloor on, on the bathroom, which is level. But what they didn't do was level the rest of the house. And uh, yeah, that's fine too. So I need to shovel a bunch of this dirt out of the way so I can get farther underneath the house over that way and commence to jacking up uh, the subfloor or jack jacking up the floor. 
and leveling it out. That's going to be powerful fun. Oh, well, let me start on that. It's not as bad as I thought. It's bad, but not really as bad as I suspected. So there, I'm going to need to brace up this floor in probably three places. That's not a big deal. This uh, center joist that runs from the front of the house clear to the back of the house looks like a pair, <laughs> looks like a 4x6, uh, but it's actually laminated 2x6s held together with 12 penty na nails. That's not a big deal. You can see there how there are three piers between the front of the house and the back of the house, and I was kind of curious as to why the back quadrant of the house was relatively level and the front quadrant was perfectly level, but then it sloped down to the middle of the house starting a quarter of the way in and then rose back up a quarter of the way out. It's because this center pier is lower than the other two. Maybe you can get a good look on that at that with the camera, but there's a copper pipe in the way, sorry. Uh, additionally, uh, this is the last joist in the bathroom, and then there is the cut where all the roaches were coming in, and then there are three more floor joists, and they sag, which is why that area right under the stove is lower than the rest of the house. So I need to brace those up as well so that they stop sagging, and that's not going to be a, a very big deal. I think the hardest part of this is going to be excavating so much of this dirt underneath the house to the outside. The cross space, you know, is very tight. And if you look over here, to that side of the house, there are exposed two and a half cinder blocks. But on this side of the house, over on the other side of the lights, it's one cinder block. So this, this uh, earth slopes down as you get to that side. So I, I can actually excavate a nice 8 inch gap going that way and that will give me the ability to not only level the floors but fight with the plumbing and uh, get a bunch of other stuff done and I'll, I'll just put the dirt outside so I'm looking at these keen joists somebody correct me in the comments if this is this part here is not a center joist. I know it's not a header joist, it goes around the outside of the house. But here, when I put my level on it, you can see it's off almost half a bubble. And in order to get that bubble to level out, I have to come down a half inch. I don't have my four foot level under here, but on a two inch level, it's off by half an inch. And since this span is from back there over to here is five feet. I guess I'm going to have to add about one inch there and then two inches there in the middle. And that should straighten up most of this and then I can actually fix these saggy floor joists. You, you look at them, you can see the big knots that uh, aren't helping. I don't know if that causes the floor to sag, but it's certainly not helping. But a long enough, um, a long enough four by four Oh, it doesn't help that these are on two-foot centers instead of 18 inches. <laughs> I just noticed that.
I got a lot of this dirt out of the way, and sure enough, this electric cable still runs on the ground because in order to put it up over the center joist, I'd have to cut the wire and run it over the joist correctly, and then run it back out to the electrical box, but I'm, I'm just gonna pin it up somehow. And then there's this three quarter inch piece of copper pipe that goes all the way outside. You can just see it sagging there on a 12 foot span. And comes back into more plumbing back in here. Uh, since I have to deal with all this plumbing anyway, this is all very poorly done. I'm just going to cut that pipe out. And that will give me, oh, it looks like about an 18 inch gap between the floor joists and the dirt. So let me do that now. So the more I look at this, the more I realize someone else has been here before me. It looks like somebody put some asbestos t uh, siding under here as uh, some sort of shim. And then where the board is laminated, it's sagging. So uh, it's, it's pretty bad. This is absolutely some can't see it from my house work. You can see where it's, it's off by about two inches. I'm going to jack it up and then look at the level in the floor inside, but yeah, this, this work is just terrible, and uh, I'll, I'll complain about it later, but let me see if I can get uh, this brick over into that depression that's already there. This old bottle jack, it's just a little too high to fit between this brick and the center joist. And I'm, I'll, I'll put a piece of wood between the jack and the center joist so I can actually distribute the load evenly between the two laminated 2x6s. And uh, that's okay. Fortunately, I have with me my handy dandy spade, which I will use now to dig out enough room for the block, the jack, and a piece of wood. the jacks in place. Let me put the other jack on the other side of this center block so I can jack this up level from both sides and then slip a, a 2x6 underneath here. I think it's going to be right about one and a half, maybe two inches to get it level. So 
it's important to get the block level and have an even layer of sand underneath it so it's not trying to split the block if you put the load in the middle and uh, it's supported on either side or either end it'll split this soft concrete block uh, it's actually the compression strength is quite hard but the tension strength which is uh, part of the bending mechanical force is very weak so these, these things will crack quite easily if you're not careful uh, so yeah if you distribute the sand underneath it quite evenly and make it level so it's not trying to shift around or, or twist these boards then uh, you'd be quite safe Again, this, this is for informational purposes only. Don't try this at home. As you can see, because they didn't glue together these laminated 2x6s, but just tacked them together with nails, uh, one side is a bit lower than the other. So I think that's going to work out okay because this will be jacked up first, and then this will jack up. What I don't want is for this board to twist, and then the whole damn house fall on top of me. So. I cut myself a nice 17 inch long 2x6 that will hang over both ends of the center block. That's in there pretty good. Alright. So my plan is to just jack up a little bit on each side at a time and, and be very safe. That's the plan anyway. I almost forgot. I have this level on the ground right between the pier in the front of the building and the pier that I'm jacking up right now. So this pier is actually pretty good. The floor between the front door and that first pier is level, but then it starts sloping down because this pier is an inch and a half to two inches too low. And if you look at the bubble, you can see it's way off center. Let's see. Yeah. And uh, I don't like that. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that I can jack this up enough to get that bubble right into the center. a lot of creaking. You notice this is starting to close up as I jack it higher. So the load bearing wall inside the house is right over this floor joist. So it's got, this is, I should have put the, the heavier jack on this side but I think we'll be okay. So much creaking. Let me find something to slip under there as I go up. For safety's sake, I'm just going to split this under there once it's high enough to fit a 1x4 and that'll make me feel a little safer. <laughs> and of course it doesn't fit. <laughs> Darn it. I'll slide it in diagonally. That's a hell of a lot better than nothing. Almost there. Let's see what's going on this other side. Almost there. Almost there. That's a little nib on the concrete block. And the 2x6 won't go past there. And of course I cut the 2x6 just a hair longer than the block. For a reason. The floor is significantly more level now, but not exactly perfect. So, yeah, I'm, uh, 
I'm looking right at it. Bubble's still off center, but if I come up, it looks like another another half inch. And that's about what I figured. It may even be three quarters. But if I can get within a, a quarter inch of level, I'll be very excited. So I'm calling back under the house now. I'm looking at this back pier. And sure enough, it's levitated up off of this last pier. So I'm going to remove this ridiculous piece and put in... <laughs> well, I guess I'm not doing that yet. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I am. Perfect. Alright, so now there is a 2x6 instead of a ridiculous piece of uh, concrete right there. Make sure I catch the lip on each side of that center block. Perfect. This silly 2x6, it's flat, but there's this nib, uh, a, a production flaw, on the center block that is, gosh, a half inch high. So, I'm going to fight with it with my handy dandy wood chisel and my hammer and uh, see if I can coax it into place. Uh, without removing too much. not perfect, but it's sure a hell of a lot better than what was there. So I am going to jack this up and go another just an, another quarter inch. I can get one one piece of hardy plank in there now. Almost. But I really want to get two pieces of hardy plank in there. And then and then I will declare victory. What I'm noticing now is that pier over there, that's just got space under it. So, so I've got this entire span of house with all these other boards going left and right with uh, just air between that board, that uh, center joist and the load-bearing pier. Why well, this is, this is crazy stuff, but it's got to get done. Mm. So what I'm noticing, that's what it is. Okay, so there's actually a crown in this 2x6 uh, center joist. And uh, because I'm, I'm lifting this end of the joist, it's actually g giving me a little bit of air. So in time, that will settle back down, but I don't want that. I actually kind of want it right where it's at. So I'm going to I'm definitely going to finish trimming that up here in a minute. And uh, honestly, I, I think I'm just going to settle for an inch and three, inch and three quarters, instead of two inches, and just declare victory. So let me let me finish jacking this this side up over here. So that's actually sitting still just a hair high, but once I release the jack, it's going to compress the wood that's on that nib, 
and flatten it all out so it'll be level. Here we go. Oh boy. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go sure up that one and the one behind me. I'll come back to that one. That one's gonna need a, a little more work. But I'm gonna cr military crawl up to the front of the house and uh, shim up what I can up there. Two pieces of this stuff is just about right. This hard E plank, but I, I don't have enough to span all three of the uh, the walls of the cinder block. One, two, three. So I need to crawl back out and fetch some more. Well, that's fun. I'll be back. So I'm looking at the level between the first and second pier, and it, it looks like I need to come up another, oh, looks like another half inch, but in reality, that pier has to go down a half inch uh, because there is a, see, between the front door and that first pier, that bubble is just about on. Now, if, if it goes down a, a hair at this end, yeah, it'll be fine. So I got inside the house and put my levels on the floor and looked around trying to figure out how it is that I'm still three quarter inches low at this end from here, but the truth is I'm this this side over here has a crown in it and it's actually up a little too high. Oh, about a half inch too high. And I'm only trying to get this to within a quarter inch of perfect. And I'll be very, very satisfied if I get that, so I'm going to take out uh, one layer of this hardy plank and then just let it settle over time. Let's see. So here I am at the front pier and really I just need here just like that one layer of the hardy plank for a quarter inch rise. So if this sits down half an inch then it will be level with the front of the house and level with the second pier back there. And in time, this board with, with these, it's actually a pair of laminated two by sixes, eventually in time it will relax and sit down on this pier. I'm at the middle pier now and this jack seems to be a little loose, or it wasn't, uh, the valve wasn't tightened down too much because this piece of hard E-plank is already pinched by the center joist. Uh, but uh, this part still rides pretty freely. So I'm going to lower the front jack and it'll be fine. <laughs> Try to go as slowly as I can. Wow, I can really hear it creaking. It shouldn't settle more than about an eighth of an inch. And it's done. Cool. Uh, I'm sure that this board's gonna have a big dent in it. Oh yeah, look at that. So, this is why I put a board between the the joists and my jack. So it doesn't mar up the joists. Could you imagine uh, that dent in a laminated pair of 2x6s? It, it might have just split them apart. On the other side, it's not too bad. But yeah, that's 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 what it looks like when a jack kisses a 2x4. Now I can release this second bubble jack. I, I don't think it's going to move because it's already sat down on this piece of hardy plank and the 2x6. There we go. Easy. That's a little creaking. That's it.
Boy, that looks a lot better. So I've, I've gone up one and three quarter inches higher than it was before, and that feels like it's just about right. Oh, and if you look at the other end, that looks like it already sat down. It is just a hair above the hardy plank. It's so close. Well, I'm going to go put the levels on the floor upstairs and see what we've got. This is that concrete nib and the notch in the 2x6 that I cut. I'm pretty proud of that. That, that looks pretty darn good. Well, I'm very pleased. I think I got to within an eighth of an inch of level across the floor here. And from the front pier to the back pier, I'm off by less than half a bubble. But keep in mind, this part uh, under uh, above the front pier, right around in here, is still going to settle an eighth to a quarter inch once the crown in the two 2 by 6s laminated down there uh, relaxes and settles down. So I'm, I'm feeling really, really good. Now, the next step is leveling the kitchen. So between the center joist and the kitchen, you can see I'm way off. That bubble's way off to the right there. And if I come into the kitchen, you'll see that it actually slopes the other way. And the problem is that these floor joists in here, well, I mean, that is way, way off. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's clear on the other side. Let's see if I can get a better view. There it is. So I need to come in five feet on this span which is ridiculously under-engineered. It uh, realistically should have been 2x8s on 16-inch centers, but it was 2x6s on 24-inch centers. So I need to buy a 4x4 and some floor leveling jacks that I'm just going to abandon under there. And I'll probably run that whole thing all the way under this side of the house. The distance between the ground and the floor joist is 14 inches. So with just a little bit of digging, I'll have room enough for a s concrete paver and my 4x4, which I'll use to shore up all of these floor joists. Well, there's not much I can do about these electrical wires, but I can remove this old gas pipe. And I'm going to... It goes all the way to the front of the house and then out the side. So... Let me commence to cutting this up. I think I'll, I'll try to uh, take out part of it from the outside where it connected to the meter. I'm guessing that's just condensate that's been collecting in there for years. It makes a nice puddle on the ground under me. So I'm crawling under here. I'm trying to figure out a great way to keep these cables up out of my way. And it's too late, of course, to go over that center joist uh, as a normal person would. Uh, some lazy electrician just dragged it through and left it on the ground and so this place is not very neat and a, a lot of people are going to hear this and say hey it's this crawl space gym you don't really need to have a a neat workspace i like it because i as the maintenance man i'll have to climb under her again at some point and if it were neat and clean it'd be easier for me but with that said uh these wires they this electrical junction box or from the meter can and then they go up now they're over this pipe where I put them and then they split out one for the stove one for the breaker panel inside and uh, I'm going to fix this
so that it, these are up off the ground at least. That's a stark contrast. So it comes in, goes up, and then stays up. And now I have some room to crawl around in. So the next step is to eliminate some more of this old copper pipe that was installed so poorly. I, you know, at the time it was probably uh, good enough. Somebody was in a hurry, trying to save a few bucks, and they wanted to run a laundry service out in the lean-to, so what they did is they plumbed in the hot and cold, uh, hot, and, hot and cold, so your, your half-inch line is the hot, apparently, and then the cold is the three-quarter inch line, and then it goes over to the shower on the outside wall, which I would never do, but then even worse, it goes out of this cinder block, out onto the ground, and then in under, <laughs> it turns and goes underground, goes around the corner, then back up out of the ground, uninsulated, up a foot and a half, and into the lean-to where the hot water heater and the stackable washer dryer are located. I'll show that to you in a minute, but I'm going to start cutting out these pipes now. Uh, this is where the copper pipe comes out of the crawl space, turns and goes into the ground uninsulated. I don't like it, so I'm definitely going to get rid of this stuff. It goes across the ground, underground that is, past all these pine cone lilies, and comes up again right here, just right out of the ground, turns and then goes in. There's a little bit of insulation, but it's pretty impotent. So when I replace this, I'll go through the attic, and the lean-to will have a stackable washer-dryer supplied through the attic. It'll be great.
that's cool. They actually put bits of wood. Whoever did this put some wood in there and then tacked the copper pipe to the wood so it doesn't slosh around so much. So it's going to reduce the vibrations just a little bit. The pipes, sadly, are just a little too close together for me to put my pipe cutter on here and then turn it. As you can see, it's it's not going to turn. <laughs> I don't have a little tiny one that I could put on there and, and maybe get between these guys. But that's okay because I have a sawzall. So I'm realizing something about this wall. This wall at the back of the kitchen, it's level at the floor because the floor now rests inside the new bathroom. And these, whoever did this work, just cut along through here between the kitchen and the bathroom and didn't level the kitchen, just leveled the bathroom. So the bottom of the wall, uh, the new rebuilt wall here, is level at the floor. The problem is that at the top of the wall, it's not level, it's not even close to level. It's got a big sag in the middle. And for those of you who have installed kitchen wall cabinets before, gosh, that is ugly. You know that that's going to show. That's going to make uh, doing this a lot of effort. Now I can't just jack up the kitchen floor because the kitchen floor is tied in to the bathroom floor with these 2x4s that run between this 2x6 floor joist in the kitchen and the next 2x4 floor joist two feet over in the bathroom. And the wall is on those 2x4s. Now I could theoretically disconnect the 2x4s from the 2x6 floor joists in the kitchen and then jack up the kitchen and then reconnect it but I'd still have to tear this wall out because at the ceiling it's not level it's sagging in the ceiling and when I try to put wall cabinets in they just won't work so I'm going to tear out this wall and in that vein I have two framing hammers, a mini sledge, a crowbar, and a flat bar, and this mini level. Additionally, I have a air conditioner and some beer. So enjoy watching me do this. Well, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I've gotten pretty far, but if I don't break up these videos, they become full-length features or gone with the winds, and we don't want that. So I've gotten this far, and in the next video, I'll show you how I got there. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned a lot.